Hello, and welcome to another Knitting How-To by Jojo. Today I will be showing you how I do stranded color work. And in front of you here, we have the Nomad Socks by Vicky Vira. I have one done, and I'm working on the other. I've just passed the heel and picked up all my stitches in the gusset. I'm about to the end of a row. And it's actually a decrease row for the gusset. And right now I'm on the sole. So I'll show you kind of how I hold the tension in my left hand and then my right hand. So I usually take my hand and I slip my pinky under the yarn and kind of pull it a bit. And then I flip my hand over and put my pointer finger underneath the yarn. And then I grab my work. So that's the left hand. Now for the right hand, I take my pinky and I go over the yarn and I scoop it and then I do a flip, tug on it, flip my hand back and then I have the yarn over my finger right there. And this is kind of, um, has been evolving because I just uh, started knitting with my right hand also to do color work. So I'm going to fix that tension. Sometimes what ends up happening is that I go under the two middle fingers too. And holding your yarns in two separate hands helps you keep them from twisting. And so my darker color yarn here will always be going underneath and then my lighter color in my right hand will be going over on the back. And I'm an Eastern knitter, which means I wrap my yarn clockwise around the needle. So when I do a stitch with the darker color yarn, and I'm going into the back loop here, and I'm wrapping around the top and then I'm bringing through the loop and then now I'm gonna do my lighter color and with this I kinda like throw my yarn around the top and then I pull it through. If you were a western knitter and you wrap going the other way. So let me fix my stitch here, my next two stitches for you. So I'm just turning them so that they resemble what a Western Knitter's stitches would look like. When you go through the front loop and then instead of going over, go under. So you're kind of picking that yarn. And then this one I'll wrap under. I kind of split my yarn there, but you get the, the idea. So I'm going to twist those back for my style of knitting. And when you're doing every other stitch, it will get a little tight on you. And you can combat that by occasionally stopping and kind of stretching out, spreading out your stitches on your needle. I need to go back a stitch because that's a decrease right there. As I've explained in a video before, my slip slip knits and my knit two togethers are actually reversed. So on this one I'm doing a what would be a slip slip knit for an eastern knitter. Okay, and I'm at the beginning of my round now. I'm going to pass my marker over to the next side, and I have a third color running right now. So I'm going to take my main darker color, and I'm just kind of going to drop it, and I'm going to make sure that this red 
contrasting color is behind the yarn. So I don't want it coming up in front of this yarn. But then my other contrasting color, I'm going to put underneath or behind it. So I'm going to actually take my, my red contrasting color ball and I'm going to flip places with my blue contrasting color ball. I'm going to pick my main color back up again. And then I'll pick up my blue. So the red contrasting color is going behind the dark main color but in front of this contrasting color. And that's to keep it so when I'm not using this red contrasting color that's to carry it up. Now I'm just following the pattern that I have. So I'll do one in the main and then three in the contrasting. Now we're not going every other, so you want to make sure that you're not pulling too tightly on this main color. So every so often kind of sp spread out your stitches. That way you have a float there in the back and it's got a little bit of length to cover the distance of the three stitches that you're doing in the contrasting color. Spread them out a bit. And just keep going along. So that's stranded color work. It's pretty simple. It does take a little bit of practice to get uh, used to holding the yarn in your non-dominant hand. Uh, another way to do stranded color work, if you're struggling a bit with holding two yarns at once, is that you can hold the main color in your dominant hand and you can knit around uh, and so every stitch that is supposed to be a contrasting color, you will just slip those. And then on the second round, when you knit your contrasting colors, you'll be knitting the contrasting colors that you slipped the previous round. And then you'll be slipping the main color that you worked the previous round. So that's one technique to do that if you are struggling to hold with your non-dominant hand. I've come full circle a couple of times, and so I'm at the end of a row. I'll knit those, and then I'll show you how I change from using my main color and my blue contrasting color to using my main color and this red contrasting color. So I'll show you again real quick. Picking up my yarn, that's with the left, and with the right, and I'm just going to knit and I'll let you know when I'm changing that yarn Okay, I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to pass my stitch marker. And now I want to change from my blue to my red. So I'm going to drop my darker color main color. And I am going to keep this red behind the blue. And I'm going to pick it up that way. That way on the inside here, it does kind of a twist over to lock it into place. So that, you know, really I don't, I'm not switching the placement of my balls, I'm not 
passing one under the other. It's kind of how they already were. And then I'm just going to go in to knitting my main color. And then I'll do my red color. Let you see what the inside here looks like. So on the next round when this gets tugged, you'll have the little twist there, the red and the blue. And I'll show you on the other sock what the completed inside looks like. We had a little helper there. This is the sole of the sock, and that's with alternating every other stitch, a different color. And then the top of the sock, you can see where I carried my floats across three stitches at the bottom with the dark color there, and then across only, you know, the one stitch. So. You can kind of see that half triangle that it's creating on the front. And if you remember on this one, going across the row, I was just doing, I was doing three in the main color and then one red. On the back side, the red is floating along those three main colors right there. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting!